Hello and welcome back to Bannerlord and our Kuzate Carnate Focus playthrough. Now we do have a hideout to potentially attack and uh, you know how I feel about these. I'm pretty awful at them, but I find them pretty fun. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move these heavy lancers to the top here and we'll move the heavy horse archers to the top as well, just in case, you know, just in case. We also found out in the previous episode that to be able to convert bandits into their uh, normal unit counterparts, or shall we say noble unit counterparts in some cases, you do need a skill called Disciplinarian. And, well, yeah, let me just show you, actually, in case you missed that. Leadership, you need Leadership 125, which is, uh, wait a minute, here, right? Wait a minute, where is it? Why am I missing it? There we go. There we go. So yes, that is 125 leadership skill. And you are then able to revert bandits into regular troops. And obviously, that's the reason why it's so incredibly high level as well. I mean, I'm not complaining about it being high level because let's face it, it's an extremely powerful ability. Because let's look at this. You can just have a raider right here, just a regular raider, you know, nothing too special about him. But then all of a sudden, he upgrades into something that is an insane monster with 210 bow proficiency. And then this guy levels up into an even greater monster who then gains 280 bow proficiency. And this guy is an absolute crazy, crazy thing that can literally kill anything, no doubt. But uh, anyway... Let's go with uh, 20, what is, his, what is his age again? 25 or something? 26 years old? <laughs> oh yeah, all of your comments, extremely hilarious about uh, Mr. Komar here, because of course he is, tw as far as I'm aware, he is 26 years old, and uh, he said that he had been fighting as an infantryman for 25 years. You can kind of see how that would be a little bit weird, right? Anyway, let's actually just go and see his entry in the encyclopedia here. I think that would be kind of funny. So let me see if I can do that. Where is he? There he is. Yes, he is actually 26. I thought that maybe I had seen that wrong at the time. And I thought, oh, no, no, he's probably 42, right? Yeah, no, he's not. That is just absolutely hilarious. Okay, so hopefully those guys are not going to go in. No, they didn't. Okay, phew. I was a bit worried there for a second. The Northern Empire has declared war on Batania. I think that's a mistake. I think Batania is going to absolutely murder them. Because Batania does tend to be quite strong. At least I think they're quite strong. Maybe that's not the case for um, other people. But I think Batania with their with their Fian hero units are really, they're really, really powerful. If they do have those, of course. Because sometimes they're not going to have them because they are their noble units very similar to the unit that I've just shown you from the Kuzate Carnate. And uh, yeah, anyway, we're going to see if I can maybe do something here. I'm a bit worried about shooting this guy. Uh, exactly. Uh, okay, could I... See, now, that's the thing. I'm just like, can I hit him in the head? No, just shoulder, 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 chest, shoulder, 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 chest. Ah, it's a new dance move, apparently, that everyone is coming up with now. And Byron is the, the, the inventor of this hilarious dance called Shoulder, 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 Chest. And, uh, yeah, he's not getting any royalties for it either. I mean, let's face it. He's a nice guy. He doesn't care about royalties. He's perfectly happy to just let them go. But Barney, on the other hand, he would behead everyone. Oh, thank you very much, Komar. I literally just shot you in the face, and now you're dead. Ah, <laughs> Uh, he is he is a, a funny one, isn't he? He's he's is he Arpelosaur? Is he Arpelosaur? Because of course, in the Barney series, we have a companion named Pelosaur. If you don't know who Pelosaur is, I feel sorry for you because he is a legend. But if you do know who he is, then you know what I'm talking about. Is Komar I and I are Pelosaur. Maybe he is. Even though he's actually kind of a beast, except in that final round of that tournament in a previous episode that we had. He didn't really do very well there. But uh, yeah, as I say, if you don't know Pelosaur, I would highly recommend just literally watching a couple of episodes of the other series just because of Pelosaur. You know, he is just... It's just hilarious. In, the, in a very recent episode, uh, we had a situation where Pelosaur was um, basically what I'm doing in that series is I'm trying to 
well, kill the entirety of the Southern Empire, basically. And to do that, I need to execute every single one of their vassals. And I'm trying to hunt them down systematically again and again, just beheading them all over the place. And I'm doing okay, you know, doing all right. And the thing is, is that if I have a look in the encyclopedia, can I hit this guy? There we go. And if I took a look in the, in the encyclopedia, then you can actually tell to see where, you know, potential targets are going to be, and then you know where they are, and so on. And you know which clans you need to eliminate as well. And so I've been doing that. And then all of a sudden, one time, I look in one of these clans, and I see none other than Pelasaur himself. And I'm thinking to myself, how is he there? How is he in that clan? Because it's the same guy as far as I'm aware, because he is technically a part of Clan Beartilt, who of course is, you know, our clan in both of my series. And it says that he has appeared in places where we have also appeared. So it seems like there's a bit of a, a bit of a weird sort of thing going on there. And it seems like he might be a bit of a double agent, perhaps. Maybe he is a grand assassin that is just waiting for the right moment to assassinate Barney when he least expects it. When he's 98 years old and just about to perish from natural causes. Or, well, from being executed himself. But yes, the point is, is that Pelosaur is an absolute hilarious addition to that series, and we gained him completely by accident into our party. And I won't say any more in case you want to watch it, but it is quintessentially hilarious. It's very, very fun. Anyway, uh, maybe Komar is our is our Pelosaur. Who knows? Maybe he is, maybe he isn't. We'll see as uh, time goes on, because the legend of Pelosaur is a very grand one. And maybe, maybe just maybe Komar will be able to do something similar. And uh, we'll see what that is in due time, no doubt. Anyway, we are going to hopefully be victorious here. I'm not entirely sure why my forces do not use their ranged weapons in these kinds of attacks. It doesn't seem like they like to do that. It seems like they like to go into melee much more often, which is kind of weird considering they are horse archers primarily. Uh, but whatever. <laughs> I guess they're not as feeble as the uh, the horse archers from the Kurgit Khanate would be in melee and they might actually be kind of good and uh, oh yeah that brings me to the next point i'm not fighting a duel with the brigands by the way because i don't really want to do that take him down yes there we are do some damage friends nice there's another one there's a little bit of extra damage there too okay come on guys we can do this okay Phew. i was a bit worried there for a second i thought to myself oh no i'm going to lose again that would be pretty pretty terrible uh, but thankfully, the developers actually did add in a uh, really cool mechanic that basically, if you get defeated in a, in a hideout nowadays, your companions or your troops or whoever it is just pull you out of the situation and you don't really lose everything anymore because you used to lose every single thing in your party if you were to lose in a hideout. So it was extremely high stakes in the early early uh, form of uh, development in early access. So yeah, that was a, a good change to make, no doubt. Let's give that guy some new stuff. Let's give him some new boots. Komar, you can use some new boots. There we go. Yeah, hopefully he's going to do okay. 26-year-old fighting for 25 years, really. Uh, okay, well, everyone is... Oh, I should have taken all the loot. Oh, well. <laughs> Never mind. I completely forgot about that. And my relation has now increased. My charm has now increased as well. And to make up for the fact that I missed all of that loot, we're going to fight these looters right here. And we're just going to auto-resolve real fast. There we go. Easy enough. And I'm actually thinking, shall we become a vassal of the Kuzate Carnate? Do you think it would be a fun idea? I don't know. That's the thing. I don't know. Because I think it would be quite fun to do so. Because they're doing quite well at the moment. And even if they weren't doing well, you know me. I'm kind of persistent when it comes to not allowing uh, allowing certain things to happen to us. And we generally tend to be quite resilient in that case as well. 
So, you know, it might be fun. It might be fun to, you know, stick with a, a faction a little bit and see what's going on. And obviously, as is the case, as in the, uh, the other series, we did need to defect at some point. And, uh, well... We, we don't really need to uh, worry about it, really. It's it's kind of an easy easy thing to do. Oh, Luvina Love... Uh, uh, Luvina Love Bark, I was about to say. No, Luvina Willow Bark. She apparently does not have very good stats, but she does have 60 in medicine, which might be something to consider, but I don't really think so for the moment because I'm looking either for a medic with about 100, 120 medicinal skill... So we'll see how that goes. Uh, anyway, someone actually did mention also that characters start at age 30 unless you uh, unless you can change that in the character creation, and I don't think I changed that. But anyway, the point is, is that apparently we start at age 30, so I didn't lose a huge amount of time, thank goodness, because otherwise if I had, I would have been kicking myself. But uh, thankfully that's not the case. So we should be all right to continue onward with our family expansion, I guess you could say, and try and get, um, as I say, I think we're probably going to try and have, I don't really want to have too many children, so I'm, I'm thinking probably three maximum, if anything, and we've already had one, so another two, I guess, another two will be, will be fine, and um, we'll see how that goes. And I'm not entirely sure who we're going to get because we might get all girls. We might get, you know, two extra boys at the end of this and because uh, we already have a girl. So we'll see how that goes. Anyway, let's do this. I have a bow. Right. Well, this is interesting. Uh, yes. Okay, there we go. Yeah, you've got to aim a little bit to the left. Some people have told me in the comments. So if, if you aim a little bit to the left, then you will be able to get some good hits in. And that seems to be working quite nicely for us. And the one thing that I uh, neglected to mention beforehand, I actually wanted to talk about this when I was in the bandit hideout, but it slipped my mind until now. And basically, what I think would be really cool is if the Kuzade Carnate, and this is, uh, this is actually a comment that someone left, and I very much appreciate this idea. I think it's a very cool one. But basically, it's... If the Kuze Carnate get eliminated, then we create our own faction and we call it the Kurgit Carnate. And we create the next generation, I suppose, of members of the Carnate. And we see how that goes. Because I am going to endeavor to be a quote unquote good guy so that uh, everyone might gravitate towards Byron and they might want to join him more often. Because as it stands right now, Barney is on an island by himself basically but uh yeah hopefully byron will be a bit more of a likable fellow and uh, people will want to join him a little more than his father anyway let's see what i can do here this is going to be pretty easy now that i have the secret to uh cheesing the ai yes and personally i don't really mind cheesing the ai on these kinds of rounds because i think that this is I don't think that this is enjoyable, to be honest. I, I don't, I, you know, I, I, I've already given my opinion on, on the spear, shield, combat in tournaments. And uh, who, who, who am I actually fighting here? Born Novice. Okay, I'm going to kill this then. I'm just going to gang up on this guy because he's a heavy horse archer. He's probably going to be quite hard to kill for me. Whereas the Born Novice is probably going to, yep, probably going to be pretty easy. So, ah, <laughs> uh, the tactics. The strategy, ah, uh, yes, the strategic elimination, shall we say. All right, so Luvina and Badur are going to get through. What do you bet? No, Luvina did not. Well, she doesn't have very good combat skills, so I suppose I'm not particularly surprised. But we are up against Badur and a Kuzate Horse Archer. And it is a spear round. Oh, okay, so it's a spear round and a bow round. Well, this is kind of bad. I can't really cheese this, so to speak, because I'm going to get shot if I try to cheese it. So I'm hopeful that what I will be able to do is maybe block to the right and then ha ha have my archer shoot the guy in the back. Yes, shoot him, please. More. No, Bornovis. Why did you do this to me, Bornovis? 
Oh dear. Well, this is going to be interesting. Yes, in the face. Did you see that? I went for that completely on purpose. It wasn't a mistake. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, this is bad. Oh, Badur, you're really low in HP, fellow, aren't you? Yes, absolutely low in HP. Okay, we've got 48 in pole arms now. That's pretty nice. Anyway, we're actually up against our Bore Novice friend that literally failed in the previous round, kind of amusingly. And uh, yes, once again, we didn't get any horse spear rounds. I'm actually kind of surprised at that. I thought that we would have definitely get gotten some, but apparently not. And, uh, yep, there you go. That, that was an easy enough victory. Not too bad at all there. And we gain a helm. I'm not entirely sure how good the helm is, but we gain a little bit of cash as well, which is quite nice. And, of course, the renown is very, very important for us. And, uh, shall we recruit some more people? Yeah, why not? Why not? Bear in mind that I now have, um, very large income. Or I should be having large income relatively soon, as as soon as the uh, the caravan actually starts doing stuff. Okay, so needs access to the commons. That's absolutely fine. Yeah, we will we will help out with that. Uh, yes, I can get your herdsman to the pastures. Okay, so I'm hopeful that this guy is actually quite influential. Yeah, he's 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 almost at 200, which is pretty good. So I'm quite happy with that. And we are going to annoy some other people at this village here. And how are they doing? 197. They're basically the same. So that's not too bad. Okay, so let's just wait here until they catch up. And there we go. Alright. You can take your grievances to your lord. There we go. We've increased our relation. We get a little bit of money. And we reduce our relation with uh, some other people as well. Which is to be expected. Am I being attacked right now? Why am I... Why am... What? What? Why am I being attacked by... What? Uh, what, what? I don't even... I don't understand. Okay, go ahead with that, I guess. So we're going to lose 17 trade goods, you know, 8 weapons, 2 mules, and 6 other types of items. And we lose 9 infantry troops. Why was I in combat? I was not attacking them. The way we just ran from the enemy back there. I don't want to get a name for being a coward, but you are a bit of a potential porky pie teller, aren't you? Because, let's face it, he said he was fighting for 25 years and he's 26. Yeah, okay. Uh, yes, very well. I would consider this when taking such actions. Very good. Okay, actually, um... Poof, I don't know. Pretty confused, actually, about that. I have no idea why that happened, but thankfully we only had to give up a, a bunch of our infantry, which is pretty good, because that means that we didn't even have to lose any of our high-tier units. We could literally just give them a bunch of recruits, which I think is okay, but I don't know why that happened to begin with. I think that that is extremely confusing, and there seems to be more and more of that stuff happening recently to me. Most notably in Barney's series, but it's starting to happen a bit here as well. Very, very strange. Oh well. Never mind. Okay, so I would like to be able to do some tasks for some of the lords as well. You know what? I am actually going to go and uh, join the Guzade Carnate. Or should I? See, now here's the thing. I am in a quandary about this. I would love to be able to join a faction or create my own faction. Either one is pretty fine with me. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. And this guy wants me to do Family Feud. Wait a minute, isn't this the guy? Yeah, wait a minute. I don't really want to do this one because I think he's going to tell us to go to the other fellow that we have already earned a lot of relation with. So yeah, they seem to always have a bit of a problem with each other, these neighboring villages, it seems. Maybe? Got five relation with him? Which which village is it, actually? Is it that one over there? Oh, now, now I'm confused. Now I really don't know. But anyway... As I was saying, I very much want to participate in some vassal battles, and I want to... Maybe I should become a mercenary, actually. That might actually make sense. We're not going to get a fee for anything like that, 
but we will get some pretty significant benefits from it. And it would be quite cool to do that because we haven't done that ever before. So I'm going to go and speak to Monchug. Monchug is the guy. He's, he's the guy that we have to speak to about this whole thing. Hello there. I'm here to deliver you my demands. Yes, let me do that. Okay, uh, there's something I'd like to discuss. I would like to enter your service. My sword is yours for the right sum. Uh, okay, there we go. Ah, interesting. Oh, I like this change, actually. I like this change quite a bit. Now, if you haven't played Warband, then you won't know what what happens with mercenaries and becoming a mercenary in that game. But basically, you get paid per week. So you get a, a wage per week, and whatever that is, uh, usually it's a pretty low sum, but dependent on whether you are playing a mod or something like that. So for example, if you were to play Prophecy of Pendor in Warband, the mercenary wages are extremely generous, and you can pretty much just run around doing whatever you want, and you'll gain a massive amount of cash over time if you uh, build enterprises and so on, and you know continue fighting bandits and all kinds of things. But here, you're going to need to fight enemies. Okay, I will accept that. Beartild has joined Kuzate as a mercenary. All right, you can count on me. As of now, your enemies are my enemies and your honor is my honor. Okay, there we go. So this is actually going to be quite cool. Bear in mind, however, that we are now at war against some people, are we? Yep. Okay, so we are at war against, you know, I'm used to seeing the entire map in full red. So this is actually really, um, really quite a refreshing view for me because everything is usually aggressive as nothing else. So, ah, uh, yes. Okay. So we have how many units? I have 73. I probably need to get a bit more to be able to fight a couple of people, don't I? So let me, whoa, there's actually a bunch. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to take the hunters. But I will take everything else. There we go. Nice. And let's go over here and see what we can do. The Vlandians are being murdered like no one's business. And uh, I think Liena was actually involved in that fight. That's interesting, if you know who Liena is. Anyway, we're now going to be gaining influence, which is something that I think would be quite important for us to level up our charm skill. I think... Uh, getting, uh, you know, spending influence and using it and so on. Very, very important. What is actually going on here, though? Why are these guys aggressive to me when they are a minor faction part of the Kar Karakurgit? I don't understand why that would be the case, considering they should get on, shouldn't they? Mm, maybe not, maybe not. Anyway, there's a hideout here. I'm going to uh, actually wait a minute. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to go to the nearby villages, see if there's any tasks, because there might be a task to eliminate this hideout, and it is going to be super easy for us. So it would be nice. Deliver the herd. Train troops. I don't really want to train troops, if I'm honest. I really don't want to train troops again. I know that a bunch of you were very helpful in the comments as well, by the way. Thank you very much for letting me know about all these various tips and things like that. Because, let's face it, I... I was just getting on tilt. You know, I was a bit, a bit on tilt about that guy that would just refuse to level up. But uh, now that, you know, a couple of you have shed some light on the whole thing, it has, um, shall we say, calmed me about that particular quest. So I will probably end up doing some of it again. But uh, <laughs> not just yet. Not just yet. Okay, so we do have a bunch of things. To refine here, I'm actually going to go out and see if I can maybe buy some hardwood. Here's some hardwood. Not that, not that much, unfortunately, but it will be enough for what we need it for. Koma, you're you're assigned to refining duty. There we go, and then we can just smelt some stuff with other people. There we go, easy enough, and there we are, and we're still gaining hardwood as well. Bear that in mind, so we can course use our other people to refine some things and then we'll just use Byron to smelt the last couple of blacksmith hammers and there you go all right so I will be going and fighting in this hideout here I don't really 
want to because I think that having a task to do this would be much more advantageous. But as it stands, it's an easy relation boost with the notables in the area. And I might as well do it, you know, might as well. So what we're going to do is I'm going to once again not take the duel because let's face it, don't really want to duel a guy that has a glaive with a spear. So I'm just going to say not going to fight. And I will actually just get out my bow and never mind. Apparently I'm not going to get out my bow because they are just murdering them. What? What actually happened? I have no idea. They absolutely destroyed them. What happens? Because usually when I, uh, when I do these these bandit fights at the end, they're usually not that effective. Interesting. Very interesting. All right. Well, whatever the case, we can uh, sell some prisoners here. And, ah, hello. Who do we have here? Okay, so this guy is not that good. He has a decent scouting skill. But what about the other guy? He's also got decent scouting, but we already have a scout technically with 40 proficiency which i suppose is okay but uh, no i'm not a not a big fan of either of those guys so won't be doing anything with them but uh yeah we will be selling all of our loot look at that 2200 i might even be able to get a second caravan that would be super fun but i would need to find another companion that has a decent trade skill if the trade skill actually makes any difference that's the thing i actually don't know whether it does but uh i guess we could deliver the herd to vanava paul where is Vanavapol, by the way? Because I don't really want to travel too far away from... Oh, we're no longer at war. Oh, well, that's interesting. Vanavapol is over there. So that's in Sturgia territory. We might come across a couple of sea raiders and things. So I am perfectly happy to deliver the herd to that location. Ooh, what do we have here? Okay, we actually have some sea raiders and some looters together. Not going to auto-resolve this because I'd like to see how the sea raiders are because it's been a while since we fought some of them. I think we did fight some in maybe a previous episode, but can't really remember that. So we're just going to do our standard auto-delegation here. And hopefully I'll be able to get some skill points in bow because it's been a while since I have actually fought in person. Uh, no. Are you serious right now? I should not go into first person, I think. It's actually not... Look at that. I'm actually not even doing that badly if I just uh, shoot randomly. But uh, the Sea Raiders are obviously kind of difficult to do damage to because they are using shields. But uh, yeah, look at that. We're actually losing some of our nomads right now. Oh yeah, because they are, of course, on foot. So it's going to be very easy for the uh, uh, for, for the Sea Raiders to eliminate them. Come on, take him out, Byron. Ah, it's just a looter. It's just a looter, Byron. You don't need to be scared. <laughs> uh, you know, it's the same thing with Barney, you know. He, he goes into battle early in his career, and he's just like, uh, I don't know whether I really want to do damage to that guy. I think I'd rather buy him a beer or some cheese or something. And uh, yeah, you know, and, and Byron obviously takes after his father in that respect. So he's going to get better in time. Don't worry about that. Oh, yes. Don't worry. Okay, so I'll just take a bunch of these. Uh, bear in mind that I'm actually not sure whether we gain the extra mercenary money from nice boots. Not from the nice boots, no, of course. <laughs> Not unless you find someone else's boots and they got some money in them, but yes. The fact is, is that what I wanted to say is, do I get the additional 100 gold if I beat random bandits? I'm going to say no. I, I think that is probably a no, but I don't know about it. So it might very well be that I might, in which case that is extremely powerful, and we would then be able to make even in, even more insane money than we already are. So I'm just going to continue leveling people up. I don't have any more horses, actually, which is a really, really big problem. So I will have to do something about that. Otherwise, I can't level up the rest of my Kuzate Nomads, which is really, really bad, especially considering I want to head in against these Sea Raiders right here. You know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to go over to Tyol here. It is a bit of a detour, which I don't really want to take, but T 
to get these horses, it's kind of worth it, isn't it? Maybe? Hmm. I mean, we do have to take the herd as well. We do have to take the herd, and we don't want to mess that up because I actually recruited some noble units from that guy, if you can believe it. So it would be a good idea for me to not dilly-dally any more than I have to. So let's sell all of that. Okay, I'm going to have to take a look and see how long it's going to take me. Oh, two days? Can I make it? I... Don't know. Oh dear. Okay, come on. Come on, we can we can do this. We've got we've got the fastest the fastest party in the land, apart from the fact that, you know, if you had smaller amounts of people. One day. Okay, I have one day to make it. So basically that's twenty four hours, so I should be able to make it because it is now midnight and I need to get there before noon. I made it. Whew. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. That that was uh yeah, zero days as you could see. Wow, that was crazy. Okay, so we have to give it to Zem the Wool Weaver. All right. Zem, where are you? There you are. Okay. Whew, whew, whew. That was super close. I did not want to annoy this guy because if I annoyed him then I wouldn't be able to recruit those noble units from him anymore and that would be awful. That would be really bad. Okay, so there you go. About the task. 34 heads of sheep. Yeah, there we go. You can take all of that. And uh, this is the guy. That's the guy. Five relation for that. Definitely need to do more tasks for him. It's going to be super fun to see if we can continue to recruit noble units from him and make our insanely strong army. And you know what I'm thinking of doing? I think I've maybe made up my mind about how I'm going to deal with... The whole, do I create a faction? Do I join another faction sort of thing? I think what I'm going to do is I will stay a mercenary for a decent amount of time, see what happens, and then from there, make a decision about what we're going to do. But I think personally what we're going to do right now, I am thinking we're going to create one of the strongest armies that the world has ever known, if we can, and then we will create our own faction. Don't quote me on that though because I don't exactly know whether I will be able to do it but it would be a lot of fun if I could. So anyway I'm just going to buy that wall razor real quick as well because you know you know me I actually like the wall razor quite a bit and uh, we'll see how that goes. Anyway I was actually going to do a tournament here if it was available but unfortunately it is not so I will instead end the episode. I thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.